Hello everyone, if I said to you, tell me about the space race of the 1950s and the 1960s, I'm pretty sure you tell me about the battle between the USA and the Soviet Union for superiority in discovering the great unknown. But actually there were some other people competing in that space race. One of which, believe it or not, was the Isle of Wight. This tiny little island off the south coast of England actually wasn't just a horse in the race, but it was actually a significant player. So I'm here now on Tennyson Down, which is on the West White, and I'm coming to find the remains of the High Down rocket launch test site. stop meeting like this and then I'll buy the fifth time it's just awkward isn't it? so I'm up bright and early look sun's coming up there's the rest of the Isle of Wight down there we're right on the far far tip near the needles which you may well have heard of they're a uh, they're a rock formation that comes off the Isle of Wight with a uh, a lighthouse a famous red and white striped lighthouse now in the distance there you might just make that out that's Tennyson Down Monument that is I apologise for the wind. Now, Alfred Lord Tennyson was Poet Laureate to Queen Victoria. He died in 1892 and was buried at Westminster Abbey, as a lot of these very famous poets and writers were. Lord Tennyson's most famous work was The Charge of the Light Brigade, which was written in 1854, and it was written about the Crimean War. It's always windy up here. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the light brigade, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death rode the 600. Now, it's about another five verses, but my memory's not that good. So there you go, there's the mainland over there. If you go further down, you've got Bournemouth. In there, you've got Lymington. I've swam that, believe it or not. Now the wind is horrific, so I apologise, but there's nothing you can do about that. I've got a pop shield and all sorts. You just make out the red bit there, that's the Needles Lighthouse that is. And just down here is that rocket launch site, so I'm hoping when I get down there, I might have a little bit of shelter. Okay, so I'm walking down now towards the test site. I'm actually coming right to the coast edge now, cliff edge, so it's, it's not as sheltered as I'd hoped. So, Britain had a very big space programme all the way back into the 1940s. Um, and it was significant, it was a significant player. And then what happened was the US took um, Werner von Braun from um, the Nazis. He, he developed the V2 rocket for, for Adolf Hitler. The US took him and his capabilities and the Russians, the Soviet Union, took basically the rest of his missile team. If you've got any knowledge of the Second World War, you've probably heard of Operation Paperclip. It was actually known at the time as Operation Overcast. And that's where around about 1,600 Nazi scientists and engineers were taken from Germany, snuck out, escaping the justice of the Nuremberg trials, and were taken to America. And that went into various different industries, but one of the main ones was NASA. And that took them to the next level in terms of their space development, and unfortunately, the British were left wanting, really. Okay, I'm very sorry for the wind, but you can see from the white water just, just how windy it is. There's the needles, and if I turn you around, look at that. So in 1958, Saunders Row were developing something called the Black Arrow, which was a single stage rocket. It was built in Cowles, which is just over the other side of the Isle of Wight, and it was dragged here, and this, was where they tested 
those rockets. And in the end, once they developed them to such a level, they were actually launched from Australia and satellites were successfully launched into space by Great Britain, all of them developed here on the Isle of Wight. Many countries got involved in, in the space race and also in, in just trying to launch satellites of their own for security reasons. They didn't want to necessarily borrow other countries' satellites. The United Kingdom was actually the only country that successfully developed a satellite program and put satellites into space and then abandoned it. Harold Macmillan in 1961 announced that actually from now on we were going to buy American rather than developing our own and that was kind of a death knell. They carried on until about 1971 with this something called the Blue Streak rocket but obviously without the funding X, Y and Z it collapsed and that was the end of the British space program. See, I don't want to climb too much around here because as you can see one slip and it's a roll and it's off a cliff edge but this was where they were developed. This was where they tested, so I'm sh looking here. I'm pretty sure obviously you would have had a rocket sat on that point. You would have probably had one in the middle and one there. So I'm assume assuming this is three rocket launch sites by the look of that. My knowledge is limited. Um, and obviously that hole there I'm guessing would, would have been where the, you know, the fire would have gone down and dispersed out to sea as the rockets were launched and, uh, and the engines were tested and, and stuff like that here. So there you go. Kind of quite a crude image, but you can see Look at that, between 1956 and 71, the needles. Headland was used as an engine testing site for the Black Knight and Black Arrow rockets. The rockets were held by gantries while the engines were fired. There you go. So, as I was saying, I think they probably fired into, into these bits there. But there you go. Isle of Wight space program, what? High down rocket test site. The sun's behind the clouds. Despite it being quite cold and windy, and I do apologize again for the noise, it is actually quite a beautiful December day. So thank you so much for watching. As always, just a short one, but I was down on the Isle of Wight visiting family and I thought, you know what? Most people don't know about this. Um, because I didn't until relatively recently, probably five or six years ago. Um, and I grew up here, so, so there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that. As always, thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I'll see you next time.